Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're well and safe in these turbulent times. It goes without saying that today I would have preferred to meet in Amsterdam together with our board of directors to lead you through our full year results for 2019. But we have had to change the format of our AGM due to the coronavirus. At Airbus, we've adopted stringent measures to keep people safe during this pandemic and our AGM is no exception to those rules. That's why I'm addressing you today by video, and I'm delighted to be able to do so. Obviously, our thoughts are with those directly affected by the pandemic and their loved ones. As a company, we are doing whatever we can to support those on the front line in the fight against this virus, including flying millions of masks from China to health services in Europe, helping to manufacture ventilators in the UK, and the 3D printing of visors in Spain. This work will continue for as long as necessary. I'd like to pay tribute to Denis Rank for his enormous contribution to Airbus during his term as chairman of the board of directors. I have benefited from his wise counsel over the years and wish him well for the future. Now, I very much look forward to working with our new chairman, René Oberman. Today, I will first highlight our key achievements in 2019. Even in these exceptional circumstances, the primary focus of any AGM remains the financial performance during the past financial year. However, given the extent to which COVID-19 is affecting our business, I will also take this opportunity to update you on the latest developments, including the measures we are taking to weather the crisis as a business and our view on sustainability in these difficult times. So first, let's look at our 2019 achievements. Last year, we made good progress despite industrial challenges and the complex geopolitical environment. In commercial aircraft, we delivered 863 aircraft, an all-time annual record for our industry. Although we had adjusted the delivery guidance during the course of 2019, we demonstrated strong underlying financial performance. Our 2019 revenues grew to 70.5 billion euro, up 11% year on year, mainly driven by higher deliveries. We delivered a bit adjusted of 6.9 billion euros, up 19% year on year, largely driven by the A320 ramp up and Neo Premium as well as the good progress made on the A350. Free cash flow before M&A and customer financing stood at 3.5 billion euros, up 21% year on year. We also addressed some key issues in 2019. First, compliance. We reached final agreements with the French PNF, the UK SFO, the US Department of Justice and Department of State resolving their investigations into Airbus. We agreed to pay penalties of 3.6 billion euros, which we paid in full earlier in 2020. Values, ethics and compliance were again a top priority for the company in 2019 and will remain of critical importance in 2020 and the years to come. In early 2019, we set out a three-year strategic vision with the aim of implementing a world-class compliance program. This has been endorsed by the Ethics and Compliance Committee of our Board of Directors. We made substantial progress towards realizing this vision last year. We are now well on the way to designing and implementing the compliance programs for anti-bribery and corruption. We strengthen our focus on export controls. We continued to nurture a culture of openness and speaking up within the group. Our employees in middle management positions are especially important to implementing our visions for ethics and compliance. And they responded impressively last year as my senior management colleagues and I witnessed during a series of ethics and compliance roadshows during which we spoke with managers throughout the company about this important subject. At the same time, we want to drive a deep and lasting culture change across the group. 
In 2019, we saw very encouraging signs of progress and our work will continue. Second, on the A400M, we agreed with our customers to re-baseline the program. We made significant progress on developing the aircraft's technical capabilities. As of the end of 2019, we also reassessed our export assumptions, resulting in a charge of 1.2 billion euro, which was booked in Q4. After including these charges for compliance and A400M, we reported a net loss of minus 1.75 euro per share for 2019. Turning to our commercial achievements, net orders in commercial aircraft reached 768 in 2019, taking Airbus overall cumulative net orders over the 20,000 mark. Our backlog reached almost 7,500 aircraft at the end of the year. In helicopters, we achieved a book to be above one in value despite a soft civil and parapublic market environment. Overall, we maintained our leading position in this sector. In defense and space, the book to bill was below one in 2019 at 0.8, despite some key wins in F400M service contracts and space. All in all, 2019 was a challenging year, but we had a strong finish thanks to the efforts of our teams and we delivered on our guidance. A quick word on the share price. In 2019, after opening at 83 euros in January, the Airbus share price increased for the year to close up at 130 euros. With an annual increase of 55%, Airbus shares strongly outperformed the Eurostock 600 and the CAC 40, as well as most of our European aerospace peers. Well, since the 1st of January, our share price performance has been a different story. After reaching an all-time high of 139 euros in January, we finished the first quarter at 59 euros, representing a drop of minus 55% in the first three months of the year. The spread of the COVID-19 and the imposing of travel restrictions around the world have weighted heavily on global stocks. Which brings me to the next topic I want to discuss today. Aerospace is among the sectors that have been the most affected by the coronavirus pandemic, which is an unprecedented situation. In fact, the industry now faces the gravest crisis in its history. We have taken prudent steps to protect the future of Airbus, to prepare all we can for a return to normal operations once the situation recovers. On the financial side, we finished 2019 with a strong balance sheet, cash position and credit ratings. To allow ourselves sufficient time and flexibility to implement appropriate operational measures to manage the crisis, we have, as a first step, further strengthened our liquidity position in the first quarter of 2020 by implementing a new credit facility of 15 billion euros withdrawing the initial 2019 dividend proposal and suspending the voluntary top-up pensions funding. We also recently issued a 2.5 billion euro bond, the cash proceeds of which will be available in Q2 2020. In addition to these measures, the board of directors also approved the withdrawal of the full year guidance for 2020, given the limited visibility due to the evolving COVID-19 situation. We've launched cash containment measures for the short term to preserve our ability to get through this crisis, while at the same time, we're addressing the longer term cost structure of the company. What about production? Clearly, demand for air travel has collapsed amid the travel restrictions and lockdowns. Our customers, the airlines, have reduced capacity grounded their fleets temporarily and revisited their capex plans. What does that mean for us? Well, we are talking to the airlines constantly to understand their different requirements and to derive the best solutions on a case-by-case -case and aircraft-by-aircraft -aircraft basis. The reality is that many customers are now asking to defer their deliveries 
or are simply physically unable to take delivery of their aircraft. We are still at an early stage of this crisis, so we have to be humble about our ability to understand all the implications. But based on our best assessment of the overall situation today, we have decided to adapt our commercial aircraft production rates downwards to ease the situation facing our customers. We will change to rate 40 for the A320 family, 2 for the A330 and 6 for the A350. This represents a reduction of roughly one third compared to our pre-crisis average rates. We are trying to take a realistic and proactive approach to managing our order book and to matching our delivery schedule with our best understanding of the current demand. Our industry is a complex ecosystem with many different parts and we are doing our best to synchronize those parts. So we're in constant dialogue with our customers, partners and suppliers. We need to navigate this crisis with them together. We're also working in close coordination with our social partners to find the most appropriate measures for our workforce. All in all, we are confronting two crises, a health crisis and an economic one. And we are facing the economic crisis by maintaining the continuity of our business. That means keeping production at a reasonable level, managing our backlog, working to meet our customer demands and securing the financial flexibility of our operations. Now, moving on to sustainability. Well, sustainable aerospace means a number of important things to us and in the current context, it means resilience and business sustainability. At Airbus, we are focused on serving our customers and society as a whole while remaining resilient. Throughout 2019, we focused our efforts on building a sustainable, purpose-driven culture that puts safety, quality and ethics at its heart while listening to our stakeholders and putting them at the center of all we do. It includes the commitment to follow the highest standards in ethics and compliance, to deliver on customer commitments and foster an inclusive, diverse and safe workplace. Our company's purpose is to pioneer sustainable aerospace for a safe and united world. This purpose encompasses the constant will for groundbreaking innovation while remaining resilient and competitive to be a sustainable business and when the time is right to be able to invest again in our future and be the leading force for the decarbonization of this industry. Our ambition remains to lead the development of a more sustainable global aerospace sector to ensure that the benefits of air travel today do not come at the expense of future generations. To accelerate this transformation, the Board of Directors has proposed a revision of its structure for executive compensation to include sustainability metrics in the variable pay scheme. Now, as we face this unprecedented situation, we are focused on our resilience as a company and as an industry, securing the future of our industry in close cooperation with all our partners and stakeholders. We are also working to meet the needs of wider society in the current context, either directly or via the Airbus Foundation. In summary, Today, we are facing the gravest crisis in the history of the aviation industry. Our chief priority as a company is to keep people safe and support those on the front line fighting this pandemic. From a business perspective, the progress that we made as a company in 2019 means that we are better placed not only to weather this crisis, but also to recover from it and resume our purpose of pioneering aerospace.